Well, the chair next uh, recognizes Mr. Rohrabacher of California. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I apologize. Uh, I had a, another hearing, a markup from another committee, and uh, I will be uh, reading your testimony. And I think this issue is uh, uh, vitally important for the future of not only the United States, but of all of humankind. The debris issue is not a secondary issue. Debris is something that will limit humankind's ability to use space for our benefit and to uplift mankind, humankind. Uh, this is, uh, and we're getting to a point of saturation now where either we deal with it or we will suffer the consequences of this limited uh, uh, and this limit on, on the benefits that we can utilize space for. Uh, one need only take a look at, at how we rely on space uh, for weather, to, for communications, you name it. We have, got, we have brought down the, the cost of telephone calls so dramatically with the use of space. We have uh, agriculture that now depends on space, the GPS. We have an, a, a whole economies based on space that are now in jeopardy because we're not cleaning up our trash. And uh, uh, we need to make sure that we just not uh, track it. It's like tracking trash in space is not the answer. What the answer is, eliminating the trash from space. And this shouldn't be just something the American taxpayer needs to uh, bear the burden of. Uh, we need to make sure that we have a, uh, an initiative. And we should, hopefully, this uh, hearing will provide a, a step number one towards creating an international initiative uh, to clear space debris from orbital, from orbital space. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I would imagine that our friends in the EU and, and uh, Russia and uh, perhaps uh, I, I can't speak for China considering the fact that they have uh, contributed so much to this problem as of late. Uh, but we should make this an international effort, and the steps should be made to, uh, uh, to get this thing moving. Otherwise, we're putting all of these wonderful assets that we have uh, uh, d invested in and that are currently helping improve the condition of humankind, we're putting them at risk. Let me note, we, uh, the uh, chairman, uh, our, our chairman of the full committee, uh, um, just mentioned uh, that we talked about near-Earth objects. And uh, when he was chairman, and I think that we probably have something where we're tracking them a little bit more than what we were then. But I don't think that we have done anything that right now that we could count on to say if we see a near Earth object that's going to hit the Earth and destroy <laughs> large numbers of, of people, uh, whether or not we have a system in place that we could then activate to deflect that near Earth object. I don't believe that system is in place. Well, we've got two major threats there, things we should be able to work on with our, uh, uh, with our allies and friends throughout the world in order to uh, achieve this as a human goal, a goal for all of humankind, as they say. So thank you very much for your testimony. I will be reading it. I'm sorry that I uh, uh, missed the, uh, and I would be happy to yield to my colleague from Maryland. Is that you? Did you want some time? I'd be happy to yield. Does the gentleman from California have any more questions? Oh, I'm done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the chair at this point, um, subject to the call for votes on the House floor, is going to uh, entertain a second round of questions, and I'm going to defer my second round at this point and recognize the ranking member from Maryland, Ms. Edwards. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And the reason I wanted um, Mr. Rohrbacher to stay is because um, in Mr. Whedon's testimony, um, he had a recommendation for the executive branch to clarify its strategy for assessing uh, the orbital debris removal. Um, and it really struck a chord because in our 
committee passed, bipartisan committee passed bill just a couple of weeks ago, we actually included a provision in there that would require NASA in collaboration with other relevant federal agencies to review the concepts and technological options for removing orbital debris uh, from low Earth or orbit. So, I mean, getting to this question of not just looking at it and knowing where it is, all very important, but what's going to be our strategy for removing it? Because we actually need to free up uh, some of that space, too, for all the additional activity uh, that's going on. And so I wonder if any of you have any views, um, Mr. Whedon, starting with you, uh, about what an effective approach NASA might take to address this particular provision, assuming that it does become law. It, it's a very interesting question. It's a very challenging question because at the moment there's no single technology that seems to be the answer. There are a couple of different technologies that have some promise. Uh, and so uh, I think a first step would probably be to uh, figure out what those technologies are and then look for how are we going to mature those technologies. Because at the moment they're, uh, they, they exist, we generally know theoretically they're probably going to work, uh, but most of them have not been demonstrated in an operational manner. So it would be identifying what the most promising technologies are. Uh, and then uh, some sort of a strategy to mature them, do risk reduction, uh, and towards some sort of a demonstration mission on orbit of one or more of these technologies. Uh, and I think that's probably going to have to be an international demonstration mission in nature, given the nature that all the debris is international, right? A, a, a country can only really touch the things that it owns, um, and so there's going to have to be some level of cooperation there. Well, given that the United States mostly tracks all of that, it would, uh, I'd assume that we should be able to get some cooperation. Uh, General Raymond, is there a role that DOD can play in terms of maturing some of these technologies? Ma'am, there's a lot of discussions that are going on around the world on this problem, and it is, a, it is an important issue. Uh, I think there are... Uh, roles that we could help. I have not heard to date, though, any, any specific technology that's out there that I see is, uh, is something near term that was going to be able to solve this problem. Mr. Nelson, I think you wanted to. Yeah, I, I think Mr. Whedon touched on it. Uh, the, the technologies and, and being able to take the items out of, out of orbit and getting them out of orbit is, is very important. Obviously, the, the sooner you get it out, the, uh, the likelihood is that they won't crash into something else. The, point, the issue, though, comes down to is whether or not you take out, and, and you and you're made, made that mention as well, somebody else's piece of debris. Uh, the flags are flying on that, even if it's not, use, not usable, uh, that particular item is, is, you know, has the flag of another, another country. So there probably is going to have to be some sort of treaty work or something along those lines or agreements made between nations in order to be able to, to effectively uh, uh, work that out. Right. Well, I know that uh, Goddard Space Flight Center has some um, rather robust activity going on now to try to look at ways to um, resurface some of these decommissioned satellites as a way to get them back in service, not put, you know, new ones up. But that, all, that too, is a long way uh, down the line, but something that I think we need to invest in. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll yield. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rohrabacher, we have time for uh, another round of questions on your end. If you have any additional questions, uh, the House floor vote has not yet been called. Um, I would just like to uh, uh, suggest that uh, uh, we make this the first uh, step and not uh, just a public relations, uh, uh, this is a problem, uh, you know. Uh, we, uh, we, can, we can do something in Congress to work with these folks and to work with people internationally. I, I have. When I travel overseas, I'm in the Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, uh, I always, when I go to another country, I go and talk to their space people. And, I, I, and every time I talk to their space people, whether it's Russia or Japan or Europe, they all are in tune with that this is a challenge that, we, that we're going to have to someday deal with. Because it's it's coming to the point now where where it's imperative to deal with it because it's limiting what we can do in space. So uh, uh, let me see. It was uh, I would just say ask him. Uh, okay, uh, have have any of have any of you had any talk with, for example, the Russians or or the EU or Japan on this issue? 
Sir, uh, the FAA is engaged with a lot of uh, international um, partners, to include the European Space Agency, and we have letters of agreement with uh, countries like Spain and right. Curacao. Um, there is, because it's such a big international problem, there is international will to uh, attack it. And uh, one thing that we have an opportunity to do here is to identify a civil agency that uh, can represent the United States, which is the biggest operator uh, out in, uh, in orbit, uh, to take a leadership role uh, as we begin to address the problem. Well, is, you know, one of the, I, I remember one of the directors of the uh, space program in, in Russia telling me that they had been thinking about some almost it's a, a bulldozer type of thing where you had a <laughs> had some kind of a uh, of a big shield in front of a something that would go forward and and get a hold of some of this debris uh, we actually uh, are we studying anything that would be I mean there's one idea I mean I'm not saying it's, it's good or bad are we really have you mentioned that we don't have any or is there a program on that is actually trying to develop the technology on this um, at the moment I'm only aware of one NASA funded program to do some technology development uh, refers to uh, what's known as an electrodynamic tether which is a spacecraft that can use uh, the combination of, um, of electrical field and the Earth's magnetic field to maneuver without using fuel aside from sunlight Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, the technology is fairly early stages, uh, but it, it could be one of the more efficient ways of moving around to gather debris. Um, I'm not aware of any other uh, U.S. government funded programs to do the technology development. Uh, but I will say that in, in reference to your question about international efforts, uh, next month there's going to be a meeting hosted by CNES, the French Space Agency, uh, that has participation from Japan, from NASA, from Russia, from a number of other countries. Uh, to, uh, it's a three-day workshop looking at technology and engineering solutions for this. Oh, really? Um, and where, this where, will the, that, where will that be? Uh, it'll be in Paris. Um, this is, and they, they've held this workshop every two years. This is the third instance of it. And what, what days are they? Uh, it'll be uh, June uh, 16th, uh, 17th, 18th, around there. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would suggest that uh, someone from this committee uh, go to that hearing, or that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Is I that a request? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, he may have to compete with the chairman and the ranking member. <laughs> Does the gentleman from California have any more questions?